scientists, including Randall Carlson and Graham Hancock, just revealed terrifying information about very advanced technologies that were used by ancient Egyptians, and these technologies were hidden or kept secret because they posed a threat to established corporations, who rely on modern technology for their profits. Governments have also hidden them because they were concerned about their potential military use. Also, according to recent discoveries, Egyptian history has a big unknown period that was caused by cataclysms and natural disasters, and it seems like these disasters completely destroyed unique evidence and fascinating technologies that Egyptians used to build pyramids. Famous scientists, including Randall Carson and Graham Hancock, define these periods when cataclysm started and erased lost Egyptian technology that was used to build not only pyramids, but surprising Gobekli Tepe as well. For centuries, historians and archaeologists have marveled at the incredible achievements of ancient civilizations. From the towering pyramids of Egypt to the intricate stonework of the Inca, these monuments have stood as a testament of the ingenuity and skill of our ancestors. However, in recent years, there has been growing debate over how these ancient artifacts were constructed. Despite much controversy, many modern scientists, including Randall Carlson and Graham Hancock, continue to insist that these creations were not built by hand. One of the primary reasons for this belief is the idea that ancient peoples simply did not have access to the technology necessary to create such intricate works of art. In many cases, the construction of these artifacts would have required a level of precision and expertise that would have been impossible to achieve with primitive tools. Yet, modern archaeologists often dismiss this idea, arguing that ancient peoples were much more advanced than we give them credit for. For example, the construction of the Great Pyramid of Giza is estimated to have taken over 20 years, which some argue would have been sufficient time for workers to chisel and shape the massive stones by hand. However, this argument fails to take into account the sheer size and weight of the stones used in these structures, some of which weigh several tons. Modern engineers have pointed out many times that the precision and alignment of the stones used in many ancient structures would have been impossible to achieve without the use of advanced technology. In addition, some archaeologists have argued that there is evidence of tool marks on these artifacts that suggest they were created using machines. There are also historical records that suggest that ancient civilizations were capable of creating incredibly advanced machinery. For example, the ancient Greeks created complex devices, such as the Antikythera mechanism, an early analog computer that was capable of predicting astronomical events. Similarly, the ancient Chinese were known to have developed sophisticated water clocks and other timekeeping devices. So, it's not surprising that these fascinating structures give rise to many questions. Ancient Egypt is a civilization that has fascinated historians, archaeologists, and the general public for centuries. From the Great Pyramids to the Valley of the Kings, the artifacts left behind by the ancient Egyptians have proved a wealth of information about their society and way of life. However, there are also periods of revolts, cataclysms, and missing history that have left many unanswered questions about this great civilization. As Randall Carlson explains, at one point, the sea level rised much faster than it has before. This resulted in very rapid changes to the coastline, destroying anything in its path except for large, sturdy structures. This is something that archaeologists and historians may not have fully taken into account when looking for artifacts and evidence of past civilizations. The severity of these events and their impact on the Earth's surface can be difficult to comprehend, and it may be hard to differentiate between natural geological formations and evidence of human activity. There are researchers who have been working in secret to rediscover alternative technologies that were used in the past. These technologies may not be recognizable to us because they are not based on the same principles as our modern technology. They are based on using vibration frequencies to manipulate matter and may have been used to move and cut stones or even transport them. These technologies have been suppressed in the past because they threaten established corporations and their investments in modern technology. Governments have also suppressed them because of the potential for military applications. However, some of these technologies are now being open-sourced, and their development may be worth exploring. Nuclear power is an example of how a new technology can rapidly change our world, but we may not be mature enough as a civilization to manage it properly. According to Randall, there are some individuals who have been working on these technologies secretly for many years, and they are planning to release a lot of their work to the public in the next few months, so that it cannot be suppressed any longer. There is a laboratory in the Maldives that has been developing prototypes using these technologies, which are based on implosion rather than explosion, and are heavily inspired by the work of Nikola Tesla and Victor Schwarberger. These technologies are different from the ones we use today, and archaeologists may not be able to recognize them since they are not looking for them. And Graham Hancock agrees with Randall. 
According to Graham, there are people working on a different kind of technology that might be a rediscovery of the technologies used by ancient civilization. Our idea of technology is limited to what we've experienced, but if there were humans who lived for thousands of years, there might have been a completely different path of technology. This path wouldn't have used internal combustion engines, cranes, or mechanical advantage, which are the basis of our technology. It would have been an insanely advanced path that's tens of thousands of years old. This might explain the inexplicable monuments that have survived. But the question is, what historical periods are they talking about? What do they mean by lost history? Well, as it seems, various revolutions and natural disasters destroyed or hid or made it more difficult to recognize these technologies. And one such period of revolt and revolution occurred in the reign of Cleopatra VII, the last pharaoh of Egypt. Cleopatra was a member of the Ptolemaic dynasty, which ruled Egypt after Alexander the Great's conquest. However, her reign was marked by a series of rebellions and conflicts, both within Egypt and with outside powers such as Rome. Ultimately, Cleopatra's reign came to an end with her suicide, following the defeat of her forces by the Roman general Octavian. In addition to periods of revolt and revolution, there are also missing periods of history within ancient Egypt. One of the most significant of these is the period known as the Second Intermediate Period, which lasted from approximately 1650 to 1550 BCE. During this time, the traditional central authority of the pharaohs was weakened, and Egypt was divided into multiple smaller kingdoms. This period was characterized by political instability and conflict, and little is known about the events that occurred during this time. But perhaps the most significant missing period of history within ancient Egypt is the so-called Lost Period, which lasted for 126 years between the reigns of Ramesses XI and Susenes I. During this time, Egypt was divided into smaller kingdoms, and little is known about the events that occurred during this time. The only surviving artifacts from this period are a small number of inscriptions and tomb decorations, which provide only a limited glimpse into this mysterious era. And that's why scientists use this example as an explanation that there were a lot of lost technologies that Egyptians used, but because of many reasons they were destroyed and we don't have any access to them. There are so many questions that scientists have no answer to. For example, what was the purpose of the Great Sphinx is still debated, and it is unclear who built it and when. What was the cause of Tutankhamun's death is unknown, and there are several theories ranging from murder to illness. What were the true origins of the ancient Egyptians are still uncertain, and there are competing theories about their ancestry and migration patterns. But what's even more interesting, scientists have made an unbelievable discovery in the Egypt's Great Pyramid of Giza. World-renowned scientists are especially interested in the enormous void that completely turned upside down everything we knew about pyramids and how they were built. An archaeologist and Egyptologist and Nat Geo emerging explorer, Yukonori Kawai, claims that this is the discovery of the century. With that, Elon Musk offered a very interesting explanation and his opinion about this issue. This is a very interesting story, so let's explain it. The new discovery is the result of the Scan Pyramids Project, a global mission overseen by Egypt's Ministry of Antiquities. Scan Pyramids had earlier announced the discovery of some fascinating voids, but the new void definitely is the most significant discovery ever made by muon radiography, an imaging technique first evidenced in Giza's pyramids. It's a remarkable discovery, according to Chris Morris, a physicist at Los Alamos National Laboratory and a specialist on muon imaging techniques. He says, this makes one more muon radiographer jealous, and he's also jealous because these guys have discovered something incredible. Scientists had discovered a few years ago that Egypt's Great Pyramid of Giza, one of the wonders of the ancient world and a stunning feat of architecture genius, contains a secret void at least 100 feet long. The dimensions of the space are similar to those of the pyramid's Grand Gallery, the 153-foot-long, 26-foot-tall passage that leads to Khufu's burial chamber, the pharaoh for whom the pyramid was built in the first place. Even so, it is unclear what is enclosed within the space, what intent it served, and whether it is one or many spaces. Here's a little briefing about ancient Egypt. The void is the first major inner framework explored within the 4,500-year-old pyramid since the 1800s, thanks to recent advances in high-energy particle physics. The findings were reported in the journal Nature. Yukonori Kawe, an archaeologist and Egyptologist, and a Nat Geo emerging explorer, believes this is the revelation of the century. There have been several theories about the pyramid, but no one could have predicted that such a large void would exist above the Grand Gallery. These glorious structures were built to last forever. The discoveries are the latest in a millennia-long mission to understand the Great Pyramid of Giza, which has long been a source of fascination and mystery. 
The pyramid was constructed around 4,500 years ago, during the fourth dynasty of Egypt's Old Kingdom. Egypt was a powerful, highly centralized monarchy at the time, rich from trade and Nile-nourished agriculture. The Great Pyramid is debatedly the pinnacle of that power. Pharaoh Khufu, who ruled from 2509 to 2483 BC, built a pyramid for himself that spans more than 13 acres and once stood 479 feet tall. The Great Pyramid of Khufu is 146 meters tall and 6 million tons heavy. It is composed of approximately 2.3 million pieces of granite and limestone that may weigh up to 80 tons each. According to Kate Spence, a University of Cambridge archaeologist who studies about ancient Egypt, these types of pyramid are the main product of the kings who built them. A large portion of Egyptian society is possibly geared towards pyramid construction at this time. Since then, the Great Pyramid has piqued the interest of visitors. Today, tourists access the pyramid through a tunnel built in the 9th century AD. The National Geographic Society has assisted in two pyramid explorations, including a 2002 exploration of the air shafts that extend out of one of the pyramid's three compartments. The new discovery is the result of the Scan Pyramids Project, a global mission overseen by Egypt's Ministry of Antiquities. The project, which began in October 2015, aims to peer into Egypt's largest pyramids using a variety of technologies. Scan Pyramids had earlier announced the discovery of some fascinating voids and oddities, which did not come as a surprise. Spence claims that the interiors of the pyramids are far more flecked and rubbly than most people imagine. The technique depends on the natural drizzle of subatomic particles called muons, which has been used to peek through cathedral walls, Mayan pyramids, and even volcanoes. These particles are constantly emitted by cosmic rays, which collide with the Earth's upper atmosphere as they race through our galaxy. Six muons will have innocently passed through this screen by the time we finish this sentence, if you're watching this video on your smartphone. Muons cannot be seen with the naked eye, but scientists can identify them using special films and sensors that trace their 3D paths. Because muons travel more conveniently through empty space than through solid objects, scientists can map the building's solid and empty parts by organizing multiple muon detectors in and around it. According to particle physicist Roy Schwieters, who uses muons to survey Belize's Mayan pyramids, the thing that's so delightful about muons is that they lose enough energy to be detected, but not so much that they just get swallowed up in the target. They are truly a wonderful natural treat. In the case of the Great Pyramid, a team led by Nagoya University physicist Konohiro Moshima installed muon detectors inside the pyramid beginning in December 2015, allowing them to collect data for months. Moroshima's first findings were published in March 2016, and they revealed that an area deep within the pyramid's interior allowed far more muons to pass through than researchers had anticipated. These excess muons appeared to trace a 100-foot-long chamber with a cross-section remotely similar to the Grand Gallery. From August 2016 to July 2017, two new teams from KEK, a Japanese particle physics research organization, and CEA, France's Atomic Energy Commission, worked to verify Moroshima's work. Each team was using a different method to detect muons. The researchers observed a signal for the empty space in each experiment that accomplished at least a five sigma level of statistical significance, implying that there is a less than a one in a million chance that any one experiment was a blip. When finding new subatomic particles like the Higgs boson, the same level of evidence is needed. The seemingly empty region, dubbed the void by the scientists, is at least 100 feet long. Its purpose is unknown. For the time being, researchers are avoiding the term chamber. In a press conference, study co-author Mehdi Tayuba, president and co-founder of the Heritage Innovation Presentation, HIP Institute, said that they don't know if it's completely flat or inclined, or if it's made of one, possibly multiple successive structures. What they do know is that this void exists, that is remarkable, and that no theory predicted it. Tayobi and his colleagues highlight that they do not know what the void is, but Egyptologists have some preliminary ideas. Spence, the Cambridge archaeologist, believes the void is a remnant of the Great Pyramid's construction. She notes that the roof of the compartments above the King's Chamber, in the central room in which Khufu was laid to rest, is made up of humongous blocks weighing tens of tons. Spence hypothesizes that the void was an inner ramp used to move the huge roof blocks into place because it aligns with the Great Pyramid's upper chambers, which were built to relieve pressure on the King's Chamber below. She claims that as construction progressed, this ramp might have been left empty or loosely filled up. Spence claims that the void's position makes this explanation the most likely. It is too well positioned for getting blocks into place up there. According to Egyptologist Salima Ikram of the American University in Cairo, 
the void's location straight above the Grand Gallery may imply its involvement in the corridor's construction. Having said that, she wryly suggests that recent interpretations to be taken with a grain of salt. Time will tell if these or other theories about the void's purpose come true. According to Taiobu and other Scan Pyramids collaborators, the work is just getting started. A cautionary note to those who dream about personally exploring the void. There are no known corridors connecting to the space, and both researchers and outside experts stress that there are no plans to delve deeper into the void in the future. Rather, they say that in the short term, they will do whatever they can to peer into space without intruding. Preserving the integrity of the historical monument is the top priority. The pyramids were so expertly made that some, including Elon Musk, once thought they were made by aliens. However, this was soon clarified. Egypt had invited billionaire Elon Musk a few years ago to come and see for himself that the country's famous pyramids were not constructed by aliens. The SpaceX CEO appeared to be supporting conspiracy theorists who claim aliens were associated with the massive construction effort. However, Egypt's international cooperation minister does not wish for them to take credit. She claims that visiting the tombs of the pyramid builders will provide proof. Experts say the tombs discovered in the 1990s are definitive proof that the majestic structures were indeed built by ancient Egyptians. The tech tycoon once tweeted, Aliens built the pyramids, of, which was retweeted over 84,000 times. Rana Al-Mashat, Egypt's Minister of International Cooperation, responded on Twitter by saying she followed and appreciated Mr. Musk's work. She prompted him, however, to look into the scientific proof surrounding the construction of the Egyptian pharaoh structures. Egyptian archaeologist Zaha Hawass answered back in Arabic in a short video posted on social media, calling Mr. Musk's argument a complete hallucination. The billionaire came around eventually and agreed that a BBC article explained it well. The extent of the influence of ancient Egyptians on other civilizations, such as the Greeks and Romans, is still being studied and debated. So, of course, it is not surprising that there are not many answers for such big mysteries that the pyramids are. And in the scientific community, there is a lot of comparisons between pyramids and Gobekli Tepe, which is located in modern-day Turkey and is an archaeological site that has challenged many of the assumptions about the origins of human civilization. According to scientists, these structures like pyramids and Gobekli Tepe raise many questions because of the lost history. The site consists of several large stone circles, some of which date back to over 12,000 years ago. While the purpose of the site is still not fully understood, some archaeologists have argued that it was created by hunter-gatherers, a classification that has been redefined in order to fit this hypothesis. Traditionally, hunter-gatherers were defined as societies that relied on hunting, fishing, and gathering wild plants for their sustenance. These societies were characterized by their mobile lifestyle and their lack of permanent settlements or agriculture. However, the discovery of Gobekli Tepe has challenged this definition, as the site appears to have been created by a group of people who were capable of complex stone carving and construction, skills that were not traditionally associated with hunter-gatherer societies. In order to fit the hypothesis that Gobekli Tepe was created by hunter-gatherers, archaeologists have had to redefine what it means to be a hunter-gatherer. One of the key ways in which this has been done is by focusing on the social and cultural aspects of these societies, rather than just their substance strategies. For example, some archaeologists have argued that the people who created Gokli Tepe have formed complex social networks and exchanged goods and information over long distances, characteristics that were not traditionally associated with hunter-gatherers. Creating installations like Gobakli Tepe would have been incredibly difficult without the benefits of civilization and specialization. Civilization, in this context, refers to a society that has developed a complex set of social, cultural, and economic structures. These structures allow for the division of labor and the development of specialized skills, such as stone carving or architecture. Without the benefits of civilization, it would have been incredibly difficult for prehistoric people to create structures on the scale of Gobekli Tepe. With that, the creation of installations like Gobekli Tepe would have required a significant amount of labor. The transportation and construction of the massive stone pillars and structures would have required the coordination of large numbers of people. Without the benefits of civilization and specialization, it would have been difficult to organize such a large-scale project. In a tweet in April 2021, Musk questioned the conventional view that Gobakli Tepe was created by hunter-gatherer societies. He argued that the massive stone pillars and structures found at the site would have required a level of technology and engineering that was not traditionally associated with such societies. Instead, Musk suggested that Gobekli Tepe may have been created by an extraterrestrial civilization, or possibly by time travelers from the future. There are obviously many questions that are hard to answer. 
One is, how were so many large stone structures erected, like Stonehenge or the pyramids? Musk said, humans or aliens, who really knows what happened at Gulbekli Tepe? He said, that's it for today. Subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell.